All right, a new session. I have a lot of parts recorded. I don't even know how much I've recorded right now. Um, it's a lot. What do we want to do? We can modify the clandestine services again. That might be good. I guess I'll stick to eating grass. There you go. Finland has a rather unique economic and political situation. As far as European nations go, Finland is one of the only nations in Europe which possesses both access to the German economic bloc as well as its own independence. By permeating Finland with Russian agents, we might hopefully be able to convince for covertly breach the German economic bloc and gain access to their markets. If we can move Russian goods in and out of Russia through Finland. We would successfully be avoiding a White Sea bottleneck as well as providing us a glimpse into the economic activities of Germany. This is a Soviet Republic. The only thing we have for dinner is sadness, damn it. Exactly! See, fucking TARDIS gets it, okay? TARDIS understands. Haha, <laughs> 69%. Nice. Comrade Sarov, didn't we just beat Finland? And we'll beat him up again. Easy. I mean, they're they're fucking communists. We we're, we're aligned with everything, right? We they they should be great. Dibs me being admiral for your submarine force. I gotta get me one of those huge coats with the shoulder things. Oh fuck yeah, dude! No problem. You've been an o you've been a loyal uh, ordo socialist, so you you'll get promotion. Oh my god, do they actually? Okay. Oh, that's trade relations. Never mind. Trucks roared across the frost flake slush roads of Finland's heartland. They rode towards a ramshackle hotel, leaning lopsided against the cold winds. The trucks centered around the hotel. Circling the wagons. From the trucks emerged with soldiers of Sarov. Thugs and brutes, agents of order socialism, they slammed shut their truck doors, the mud and sludge slashing onto their level tr leather trench coats. You can take one from them. There you go. They whipped out their pistols, preparing to bring flashes of light to the dawn. Stomping out of the hotel, they shuffled towards the contact, the German agent who would act as a middleman between their two pa Apologies, if only in an official capacity. The agents of Zoro flooded the hospital, pushing over tables in search of hidden weaponry and cracking over, open the window in case of an ambush. The aid, head of Zoro's agents, Yegor, took a seat with a German contact, cracking his knuckles and laying a pistol at the center of the table. He motioned to another agent, who brought forward a, a shot glass and a bottle of Koshenkova Vina. Yegor looked insulted for a moment before throwing a shot glass to the side and cracking open, open the Kosu. He'd chugged down the bottle, the vodka, enough to refresh his throat, so half the bottle. These Finnish bastards get all the good alcohol. The war, the death, it could all be tolerated, but the lack of a good drink... This is the greatest burden our people bear. Now, on to our, uh, <laughs> our, uh, our negotiations. Igor began to pat the rickety wooden table upon which they sat. We understand you can't yet begin any former act with our nation, so let Finland be our backdoor, for hands to be shaken and commerce to flow. We have depots in Lapinranta, Usima, and Vanta. Now what do you say, hun? The German contacts stared at his surroundings. The agents began to unfurl their knives and brass knuckles. Yegor's hand crawled forward until his fingers touched the grip of his pistol. Uh, 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 deal it is, Lundspat. I, I, I will, I will get some workers to form a few connections at your depots. Finland shall be our gateway. The guard is dead and the lock broken. There we go. Beautiful. Let's go ahead and encourage some new officers. While the old guards have plenty of experience and knowledge from so many wars in the years past, they aren't really the kind of people we want manning our army. Many of them would have sworn allegiance to a dozen times over whoever they would find themselves working it for all the time, whether it would be fascists, traditional communists, capitalists, and matter not who to them. All that matters is that their safety and comfort 
This is very safe and comfort. And if it takes a petty allegiance, then they will gladly proclaim allegiance all day and all night. There are surely hundreds, if not thousands, of young, fresh soldiers with knowledge and experience from the Unification Wars, as well as the devotion and loyalty towards Ordo Socialism needed to be an officer. We should begin promoting these kind of men to officer positions. There we go. I'll get war working on sending these guys over slowly. And eventually, we'll probably... I imagine we'll just go after these guys soon enough. We can do... When do they unlock their... Oh! oh! Guys, Omt died! Omt is fucking dead! <laughs> oh, God. Omt's... They're, they're fucking dead, Jesus. That's... Jesus. Okay, well... Yep, Yazov is... dieted. There goes Salazar. The Russian National Reconstruction Committee. Yeah, holy sh... Um... Here's another fun mess we've gotten us into. I think this one is actually intended to possibly happen. Okay, let's go ahead and exert influence in the Urals. Race for the Urals, a new theater. Let's just launch a military intervention. What is fucking Alms gonna do, huh? Yugra's back, baby! Oh, yes they are. Oop, national focus. Let's go ahead and select it. We'll do a blueprint for struggle. Our unique ideologies put us in a rather compromising position. Most every other nation on the planet would see us fall, whether it be the National Socialists in Germany, the Fascists in Japan, or the Capitalists in America. Thus, we must embrace a doctrine of critical support for any anti-capitalist or anti-colonialist imperialist movement that may appear in the world. Our men in intelligence have created a standardized plan to follow in order. Would Whenever such a movement, rebellion, or revolution comes to our attention, a basic blueprint to follow, which involves immediate shipments of armament, capital, and advisors to aid in their struggle, in addition to long-term uh, volunteer deployments, and international funding of any other resources they might need. We will do everything in our power to aid these revolutions and to further destabilize our enemies. No. So there's no one opposing the Urals, so why not? To make it quick, just fucking get it over with, you know? I don't want to wait. To fucking influence these guys. That sounds like work. Fuck that. This will just be easier. Quicker. So we're not going to negotiate with these, these fucking... These lame losers. Authoritarian democracy. More like authoritarian get the fuck out of my fucking face. Comrade Sarov, who do you support in South Africa? Look, that's that that's a question. Um Well I I I guess, I guess all of these people, really. What South Africa? Keep down massacre. God, they have contraband trafficking now, Jesus. Um. I think we'll do a left, a left swing for for our army thing, and then Increases GDP significantly. I think we'll strengthen the left wing of the party. Economically. 
The future of the Russian economy lies in the state. Modern social democrats won against the sort of revolutionary politicking and venturism that we are pushing. They lack the will to fully reject the corporate and capitalist systems of Italy and the US. We have no such restrictions. We must continue and expand the process of nationalization in all industries. Under government control, we will bring Russia closer to the sort of autarkic self-sufficiency that other nations, Germany, like Germany, have strived for, I'm guessing. Who do we support in Indonesia? Um, not these guys. I can tell you that much. They are quite friendly with the Iberian Union, strange enough. Well, let's get those new guns going. The advanced rifles. What's old Maggie doing? They've dealt with the Welsh issue. Fuck, what else is there, um... What is that else is there to do? Smarter academic academic base, beautiful. Comrades rebel, the Yankees support the rebels. We'll do, we'll just have them kill the Yankee volunteers. There we go, easy, easy clap. Two birds, one stone. Okay, collective vanguardism. People of Russia must understand that through our collective will, Russia can achieve anything. There is no greater expression of a collective than the workers' collective. The people working together in thousands of collectives across Russia to form an even greater expression of the people, the state. We must spread this message to the masses. They must understand that they are the engine, the driving force, the power that has brought Russia as far as it has. So long as they believe that they are what's driving our state forward, they won't feel any need to actually seize control. That's where we, that's where you get them. Okay, what do we got? We're leaning slightly leftwards, yeah. Um, daily national socialist and authoritarian socialist support. We're only at sixty-seven percent support now, not sixty-nine percent. That's not very lol, funny, wholesome. Who do we support in the UK? Well, I can tell you one thing. It sure as fuck isn't Margaret Thatcher! Well, it actually seems like she's doing the less cursed. She's kind of doing the populist one. Um, well, she's doing middle class. Oh, there we go. Onwards to war. I need an offensive line into these places, right? Umps declared war in the Euro League. And Ornberg, okay. Umps. Wait, what? Oh, okay. And they declared war too. I was confused for a second, but yeah, that make that make that makes more sense now. Um, let's just rush to Orenburg, honestly. Um, we could declare war. We're declaring war on him again. Fuck it. And then move into. Actually, we'll we'll take out Orenburg. I think just like with that. Move into Saibay. There we go. Oh, no, that's not what I want to click. We'll do a big old front line here. Do an offensive line into a... Beautiful. New na no national focus set. Let's do an attack on the capital. There we go. There could be no private property, businessmen, or financial institutions in the new Russia to come. The global conspiracy of capitalists and corporatist nations plotting to against us is how we fell last time. Bukharin was far too liberal with the NEP, and we cannot afford to repeat the old fool's mistakes. 
Private property and institutions will be seized and nationalized at once. Those who volunteer their property quickly and cooperatively will be given rewards, like government positions or a large one-time payment. Those who refuse will face execution. Now that works for me. So are we... We're still at war with them, okay. I was about to say, because we weren't pushing, really. We stopped the orders. That makes more sense. That makes more sense now. Of course, when he knows they're not actually attacking into the nation, that, make, that makes sense, but... Okay, we can go ahead... And create Ornbug and Orsk, which we'll go ahead and do. Here we go. It's a little war, but it's a little bit of action. Okay, a leap into the future. Increases GDP significantly. The introduction of socialism into Russian economy must be accelerated if we are to protect... We have no manpower. Let's just go ahead and we'll, we'll chill off on that for now. The idea that we need a grace period as we transition to a bland economy set up is not only foolish but dangerous. The longer our economy remains open to the world, the longer the more opportunities our enemies will have to exploit our weakness. We have the means and the will to implement socialism into the economy now and we must if we wish to protect Russia from outside forces. I was about to say, I thought we I thought we almost had it. And yeah, we'll get this guy, and then that's that's really it. For now. We might want to go ahead and um, edit the divisions real quick. We'll give um those field hospitals. And some recon companies, actually, while we're at it. We're moving in. There we go. Go ahead and integrate Uskatav and Magnigorsk. Do an offensive line when that time comes. To prepare. Ooh, we are behind on our research. Get working on that. And then doctrine wise, we'll hold off because we're going to get some boost eventually. The Iberian divorce just wasn't meant to be, apparently. A leap into the future. One big old union. Sasha had never been one for theatrics. It simply wasn't favored in his line of work, and he wasn't going to start now. Even though he was not immune to panic or anxiety, and this massive crowd of people, even if they were unionists like him, was really not helping for his stress levels. God, why did Gensec pick his union for administrative duties in the first place? Had he done anything to offend them? Well, it was immaterial. There was, after all, a job to be done. Sasha cleared his throat, tapped the mic, and w at once the room fell silent. Welcome, friends. We are gathered today at the request of the Republic and the General Secretary. Arash's voice called out from the front. Yeah, yeah, we get the message. What does Sarov want from us again? Haven't we already promised him the quotas? There was a commotion and a hint of mocking laughter. Sasha gritted his teeth. Yes, comrade, the General Secretary is fully aware of this. Our efforts, I mean. But we must all work together now for the resistance against the degenerate capitalist. Again, a voice interrupted him. This time from far end. Ain't we already gotten rid of a capitalist? I'd like to have a cuppa with the Gensec himself, seeing how he's wasting his, our time here. Maybe he'll sponsor me for the privilege. This time the laughter came and burst, and was unrelenting. C -c -c Comrades! Y y you're not listening to anything I have said. What I'm saying is this. The Gensec wants us merged. Different positions, professions, different industries, different companies. We all are to be a single party now. And we must, must work together in unison. There was once a moment of pregnant silence. And then everyone rose to speak at once. Questions, one at a time, please. I think next 
is time for total mobilization. Total mobilization is an interesting concept. It refers to the complete and total utilization of all resources a state is capable of mobilizing. To engage in the total mobilization of the nation is to convert said nation to an engine of war, consuming men and steel and machinery alike and pumping out soldiers and rifles and tanks and planes. Many people view total mobilization as a last resort, something to be utilized only when all else has failed. In ordo socialism, total mobilization is an ideal, a goal to strive towards. Only through the total mobilization of all Russia has to offer can we crush the capitalist and cosmopolitan forces of the world. That works for me. I got a chili. I'll just put this jacket back on. Protect myself from the cold. Serbia sided with Italy. Alright. Free military factories. What do we need to add to? Not much. We're doing fine generally. Looks like. I'll put some more more into guns because I have a feeling we're gonna be um needed to ex uh, exports uh, or uh, we'll need some more production towards the new batch of guns soon. <sighs> Capitalism, cosmopolitanism. These were the true enemies of the Russian people. The old Soviet Union failed to defeat these powerful foes, but Tsarov was going to give Russia a second chance. It was time for the Russian economy to mobilize to prepare itself for war. A war against the insidious forces of capitalism and cosmopolitanism. Tsarov's new Soviet Union will not fall like the last one, it will stand strong in the face of adversity. When the, while the economy mobilizes, the proletariat must face as well. They must harm themselves, answer the call of duty, and whether the inevitable sacrifices they will be forced to face. Under Oro Socialism, Russia is strong. In this world, the strong are destined to survive while the weak perish. Bukharin's old Soviet Union was weak, having embraced cosmopolitanism and becoming allies to capitalism. It was inevitable that it would though that it would be destroyed. There we go, I can speak. So the Soviet Union had been reforged free of these impurities, and was time to prove it to the world. If the strong survive, the weak perish. That is all that matters in the world. Okay, um... An increase of fascist support. I think we'll go right wing for this side of things. Order socialism isn't one monolithic mode of thought and ideology. It is an ideological with the capacity to change and adapt. In this case, in order to further the party's interest and influence in Russia at large, we need to appeal to a broader range of Russians who ascribe to all sorts of policies. To that end, we should seek to incorporate the right wing into the order socialist apparatus into the party. Accepting these people into the fold can only serve to strengthen us in our interests going forward. Makes sense to me. God. Let's get an F in chat for poor little Omsk. God, yeah, they're not... They tried. I'll give them that. They, they, they fucking tried. Red-white conciliation. The Knight of the Long Pens. Between the razor's edge of socialism and the dull anvil of the conservatives, Sorov thought there was precious little leeway. He was lucky he wasn't a negotiating man. This was no place to bargain. While his erstwhile followers... With his erstwhile followers, men he could barely trust while in the same room, it didn't look promising to start testing the waters right this moment. Sighing, he needed his temples. A half written speech crumpled to his side. He would join the others in the bin soon enough. Damn the passionary and their internal discipline habits. Hadn't it been enough that he'd enthusiastically dog whistled to their basis? Most ir irritatingly capitalist desires to gain a seat at the table. Now his hands were tied and his mouth was stoppered just at the moment when his triumph was supposed to be full and complete. All well, of his treaties on the rights of a na sovereign na nation was complete. What an incoherent jumble of ultra-nationalist sentiment it was. But it had been the only way to make the 
idea acceptable to both his conscious and the appetites of the passionary. Moving to the internal enemy section, however, that was promising in a way, more mere centralism had never been. Yes, yeah, so if there was one thing Sorov knew, Bass in his long years of serving for the Republic in the left, it was rooting out enemies. In the many ways one developed to finding them. The people had many enemies, but some would always be less disguised, less distinguishable than the others. We will purge the Republic. Together. What else now? Um... Together to greatness. Why not? In order to mend the rift as grown between the leftist Ordo Socialist and the right wing Ordo Socialist, we should approach some right wing leaders with offers of positions in our government. These positions wouldn't be glamorous or particularly powerful, but would go a long way towards normalizing and improving relations with them. This may slightly weaken Sorov's power, thin the party, but by opening up our candidates' selection pool in the government to people further to the right, we will also be expanding our talent pool, increasing the government's ability to find skilled candidates for jobs. And yeah, that works for me. Yeah. I'm guessing... I'm curious if we'll get war declarations on all these guys, or if we might have to do some uh, console trickery. We'll get AKMs going. The new generation of weaponry. What's... Uh, Takagi going up, uh, doing now. Mm. Fee, okay. So we lost those guys. The new Soviet man can be described as a lot of things. He's intelligent and educated, well-versed in traditional Marxist-Leninist literature, as well as more modern order socialist literature. He's watchful and vigilant, reporting to the proper authorities any misdeeds or crimes he sees. He's patriotic and nationalistic to secure the knowledge, secure the knowledge that Russia and the Soviet Union stand above higher than any other nation on this earth. Above all else, though, he's loyal obeying the state and having full faith in Sorov's wisdom and guidance. This is the new Soviet man, and you will become him, if not for patriotism, then for your life. Oh uh, yeah, some ministers would be nice, please. Can we get those? Margaret Thatcher is still in power. God damn. I, I'm not even... The puppet snapped her strings. And England and Scotland are at war. Well. We can't modify our government. I don't know what's happening. We have a lot of stuff we gotta catch up on, right? Support weapons... Better bit motorized. It's probably a good idea. Free military factories. Um, basic IFVs. Get working on those a bit. Then we broke in consensus. We have begun the creation of a new order socialist man. The an archetype that all Russians should aspire to be one day. The Order Socialist Man is a useful tool for further instilling and cultivating the correct values in the populace, and it should be help Order Socialism permeate the routines of daily life. The new Order Socialist Man is to be selfless, learn, athletic, enthusiastic, and spreading the Order Socialist Revolution. The Order Socialist Man is not driven by crude impulse of nature, but by conscious self-mastery, a rejection of the unconscious and the innate personality. His work should require exertion and self-improvement. The ideal example of the order socialist man should always aspire to break his record quarter record quotas for each day of work 
Bureau of Socialist Man would be conscientious of class and national struggles. He lives and dies by the teachings of old socialism, Marx, and Soro. He will give all he can to his country, to Russia. He treats public property with respect, as if it were not his own. He decries and denounces the capitalist and imperialists of the world, praises and supports the military, and answers the call of duty when his home finds itself at war, without hesitation. Above all else, we have a new order socialist man, a boy Sorov, in his teachings. He informs his W of authorities of dissidents. He combats reactionary threats wherever it may appear, even if it roots its head within his own family. He serves his government and leader with everything he has, for that is every citizen's duty. We can expect great things of a new order socialist man. There we go. Um. I'm not really interested in the bottom of the tree. We'll probably do up the um, lessons of Red Napoleon, and then we'll do the apparatus for liberation. Because this seems interesting. Really interesting, honestly. An eye to our history. The Unification Wars were a grueling and savage affair, but they served well to hone our military, much as a hunter hones a knife. In the aftermath of such a bloody conflict, we've learned quite a lot, and we'll be modifying our doctrines based on the lessons we learned. We gained experience of fighting in a, the, varying terrains, the varying terrains of Russia. We learned how better to manage our supply lines, and most importantly, our men got real combat to train with. We can use their experience to com continue bettering our military. Our forces to train with the last war they thought fought. There we go. Yep, there goes Scotland. Pushing through. We've taken Dumfries. Right on. Right on, mate. That's Australian. Not, not English. We have another research slot. We'll go and do... More field hospitals. There we go. You go to still in power. That's kind. Of, that's a little not good. I'm gonna. I'll take a sip. Am I a rock star? Not a sponsor, by the way. Though, if you want to sponsor me, rock star, just just hit me up. The military is currently in desperate need of doctrinal change. If Strov wishes. To forge a stronger Soviet Union, the military must be as just as strong. What better way to evolve the military doctrine than to learn to the past? Russia has seen lots of conflict in the last several decades. The military's high command, all of throughout the, have all lived throughout these conflicts and seen what war, what works and what doesn't. Every military prepares for the last war they thought, fought, and Russia's military shall be no exception. The specific ideas of interest can be picked up from the Great Patriotic War with a bit let's creep quickly leaving Europe's armies disorganized and unable to keep up. Innovations on how we use armor, how we use aircraft, and how we use infantry should all be implemented into our doctrine. Of course, Russia, West Russian War and the various warlord conflicts throughout Russia have given us many valuable lessons to learn from. Once we've implemented these changes, Russia's military shall be prepared to fight any kind of war it finds itself in. If we do not learn from history, we're doomed to repeat it. You go to looks like an angry penis. He'll become flaccid eventually. Yeah? Yeah, he will. Probably. The industry bonus would be nice, I think. I'll make a decision on that. Actually, the war is coming up soon enough. The only happy leader in this mod is Faisal in Iraq. He looks happy to be there. JFK looks happy to be there. Well, he's still alive, at least. Uh, political commissars are meant to be among the most loyal and devoted men in our military. Their job is to ensure that the soldiers in our military remain as loyal to order socialism as possible. Due to our former relationship with the right, it wasn't possible to have political commissars of any particular strength or effectiveness. Now, however, with order socialists firmly in control of the government, we can have real political commissars with loyalty and drive. They will be the vanguard, fighting on the front lines with our men and making sure that treason and disloyalty towards order socialism remains nothing more than a fear and not a threat. There we go. 
Oh. Almsk is, is preparing for war. And, you know, I... I, I Oh, there we go. I was about to say. Okay, yeah, we can declare on these guys. Okay. Get those reserves. Supply chains. Survey the positions. Prepare the border. He does have a very tender style photo. Oh, it does Iraq. Assuming it's still him. Let me see. I don't think it's the same guy, but I kind of can see where you're coming from, if if you were talking about him. We might see if the in the Russian war eventually. Uh, assuming that that ha the Iraqi civil war, assuming that happens, of course. Do all of those. Expand some air bases. We're we're moving on. Yeah, I got Iraq and e Egypt confused, I think. Which would get me murdered if this were real, probably. Oh uh, yeah, they just have a they just have a fucking seal right now. As their leader. Well that deal seal does look very hot. So I uh, uh, I'd swipe right on it. Um, left or right, left or right. We'll do the legacy of the war. It was always Zukov and Vol... Uh, I'm not going to try to pronounce that, I'm too tired to. Who had their, the right out of it when it came to military ideas. Their idea of using mass industrialized combat combined with more traditional Russian army tactics were revolutionary. They'd entered those ideas early in their war against Germany. We very well may have pushed the Hun back and even won. We should endeavor to implement the, their ideas about warfare into our doctrines and do an effort to modernize our army. They were great generals. Let us not waste our insight. Old Borman. Hanging on somehow. The Mad Prince. The Finns. Oh yeah, they, I guess we have a, a reaction tree to Finland being communist. Interesting. Um, is, is Borman broken? I think Borman might be broken too. <sighs> Let's see. Who got elected in America? It's Nixon, everyone! Third term, ladies and gentlemen, historic for TNO, the first president to be elected to a third term, I think. Let's see, it's Hoover, then Hoover again, then Joseph P. Kennedy, Kennedy again, then Truman, Dewey, Eisenhower twice, and then Nixon. Yeah! Crisis in Nanjing. Oh no. Japanese involvement in the Chinese economy has reached a breaking point, and every man, woman in China knows it. Uh oh. Hmm. We'll see what happens there. We'll do the uh, the lessons from Red Napoleon. Tukhachevsky was a genius on the battlefield, if there ever was one. He was a giant on the battlefield, easily among the greatest generals in the Second World War and the West Russian War. His doctrine regarding the disciplined battle tactics was revolutionary. In an era that has been all but abandoned the excellence in the field, technology is obviously important, but it's the general, the commander, and the captain with whom the focus should lie. If we can train our men to think on their feet and come up with creative solutions to dangerous situations, then we will have succeeded. The German relies on his guns, his tanks, and his missiles to do all the work, but he never thinks. None of those things will do him any good if he doesn't realize he's already been flanked. 
Here we go. Um, I think we'll probably need to do some fortifications just in case. So, we have achieved true enlightened centrist order socialism ideology. True enlightened centrism. Is this the mythical radical centrism that I have heard of, guys? I think it might be. Get some better bombers. Or more bombers, not better. Actually, should be able to finish. Oh, what is that going to be? Nope. We do need to wait for that other one. Fair enough. Lessons from the Red Napoleon. <clears throat> Tukhachevsky may not be a lo loyal follower of Order Socialism, but Zerov still believes his ideas on warfare could be of use to his military. The man is called the Red Napoleon for a reason, after all. That is why Zerov orders his generals to read up on Tukhachevsky's military theory and find a way to implement him into his own doctrines. Tukhachevsky's writings on discipline within the army interest the general secretary greatly, as they've easily fell in line with the order socialism teachings. Tukhachevsky desired the entire chain of command to adhere to their Spartan dis this Spartan discipline, purging generals who failed to uphold their duty. Of course, the Rose generals were far more eager to discuss the actual tactics he described. Offensive deep battle, defeating the enemy not only at the line of combat, but throughout the battlefield, Tukhachevsky also placed a great emphasis upon operations at the third level of military thinking as a crucial part of military theory. Sarov's generals had a lot of work ahead of them, integrating these new theories on armor, aviation, reconnaissance, airborne units, command and control, and even chemical warfare would take some time and a lot of organization. However, though this momentary pain, through this momentary pain, the new military doctrine will be strong enough to preserve Russia through any conflict. The Red Napoleon's writings shall serve order socialism well. So we're done with this. I'm not too worried about this other stuff, to be honest. So we'll do a... Foreign policy real quick, and then keep on pushing. We must turn our state into an efficient machine of worldwide resolution. We are to defeat the capitalists and corporatists of the world. Our state intelligence apparatus will have to ascend beyond that of a regional influencer. Our intelligence agency it's, will itself become an international network of liberation movements and freedom fighters cooperating and coordinating under our global umbrella of support. Our global intelligence network will soon become even more influential and powerful than the CIA's. That's the spirit. You, you gotta love their enthusiasm. Enthusiasm. I'll just wait until this finishes up in... Oh god, that's gonna take a while. Yeah, we'll just do this. We'll get command power by then. We'll be finished up soon enough. I'll get working on, actually, I'll get working on jet engines. Maybe get working on some of those better planes I accidentally brought up, sort of unintentionally brought up. An apparatus for liberation. Okay, we got a new agency created. I'll take it. Let's go ahead and... Do a mission abroad. The Middle East is a powder keg, not unlike the Balkans. There are dozens, not hundreds, of insurgencies and liberation movements in the area, and the already, un the already unstable na nature of the region will make it easy to infiltrate, manipulate, and further destabilize. Our men have already made contact with the Ba'athist liberation movements across the region, as well as the Kurdish separatists, specifically in northern Iraq and southern Turkey. Disrupting Middle Eastern politics and pushing it further towards civil war and unrest shouldn't give us too much difficulty. Are we turning into Burgundy now? What the fuck? Speaking of Burgundy, what are you up to, buddy? Uh, looks like they're doing some Strengaheim. Of course. Um, go ahead, do some basic motorized. We'll do what else now? Bit better anti tank. Any 
and soon enough we're gonna cross. I, I assume we have to cross eventually. We'll train up eight more guys, place them in Vyatka. And then we'll do a separate army. And we'll set them. They said that's where this thing is gonna be. 